Okay. So, uh, hello everyone. I'm uh, Alexis Ivanovsky, or maybe you know and remember me. I'm part of the Global Data Warehouse Leader Group and responsible for big data technologies there. So, today we're going to start our series uh, about big data SQL. And uh, it would be more concrete series, and every webinar, every uh, virtual meetup will explain some feature of Big Data SQL or some uh, approach for Big Data SQL. Today, we're going to start with uh, Enterprise Manager, Cloud Air Manager, and other way to analyze performance of your Big Data SQL queries. But let me start uh, with the very beginning, and let me uh, remind what what is the history of this product and which challenges um, have it resolved. So many customers have uh, inside their enterprise different uh, systems, and uh, like Oracle database, like Hadoop, like many NoSQL databases. And every single system has own API. It, it's going to be either Oracle uh, SQL or, uh, uh, or Hadoop uh, uh, SQL. Or in, inside the Hadoop, you could have either Impala Engine or Hive or Presto or somebody else, some, something else. So every single NoSQL database has own API. And it's quite, it's getting quite complicated to support all those APIs. What people want to have, single, SQL, or all those sources. Big Data SQL was designed and uh, built just for these purposes. Um, so how looked like analytical uh, process before or without Big Data SQL? One very smart guy writes MapReduce code, writes some high uh, SQLs, writes maybe some big uh, scripts, and in the end, it analyzes somehow text files. With Big Data SQL, you could use SQL, which you put in front of the uh, BI tool or some analytical tool like uh, like used to use SAS, for example, and just query data in your usual way. So, and uh, how we, how do we recommend to use big data uh, together with Oracle database, big data technologies together with Oracle database without big data SQL? We uh, used to say that you have to put all your data in the head do, then build some aggregates, prepare it, Group your data and then move on the database tire. And then, only from the uh, only with database tire, you have to work uh, uh, your uh, sorry your end user application have to work only with database tire. So, with Big Data SQL, you are able to query data on Hadoop and on Oracle database directly from the, your application, from your application. So it's main intention of Big Data SQL. Okay, and now uh, let's have a brief talk how does it actually work. Uh, um, maybe you know that Hadoop has two uh, different logical tires. It's storage tire where you actually Put your data. It could be either Hadoop file system, HDFS, or one of the NoSQL databases. As well, Hadoop has plenty of processing engine to query your data, to proceed your data, to work with your data, to do real analysis. First of those components was MapReduce, or uh, it's more convenient implementation of MapReduce, which we call Hive or it could be Spark, or it could be Impala, or it could be Cloud Air Search, or Solar, and it could be Big Data SQL. So Big Data SQL, it is another one process which you run on every single Hadoop node, on every single data node, and uh, it 
proceed data which you store on HDFS or NoSQL database. We don't bring something special on the storage layer. On the storage layer, we work uh, we work with HDFS or NoSQL data. We don't do any specific um, optimizations for storage. We just put our processing engine over HDFS. What have to be done on the Oracle database? In or on or on the Oracle database side, on the Oracle database side, you uh, have to create external table. Uh, since Oracle 12C, you do have two new type of the Oracle external table. It could be either Oracle Hive or Oracle HDFS. Uh, we recommend use Oracle Hive. Uh, as uh, always when it's possible. Uh, it inherits metadata from the Hive Meta Store. If you already define it there, you just reuse this metadata definition. And it's our recommended approach. If for some reason you could not use Hive, uh, you could define metadata with Oracle HDFS uh, type of external table. So, and uh, inside this detail, you uh, you explain how to uh, access your data, which tool are you going to use. So um, you explain cluster which you're going to uh, uh, to use for these queries. So and um, after this, you are able to query Hadoop data through the Oracle database. What happens under the hood when you run SQL in Oracle database? You log in into uh, Oracle DB, put some SQL statement, and then query jump to the name node. Uh, from the uh, name node, you get file location, state structure, you define parallelism, and you plan some, uh, you create some uh, plan. You create some scan plan and start smart scanning data on the on the Hadoop layer. So, on the Hadoop layer, you scan the data, you filter out unnecessary data, and then move back to the database only requested block, only block which matches with your criteria, with your SQL criteria, and then join it with a. Uh, uh, with Oracle data, for example, with uh, data which you store in Oracle database. Okay, and uh, let's zoom out big data part, what's going on on the Hadoop side. And uh, here you could find very familiar from Exadata uh, uh, works, smart scan. Smart scan, it's a uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, backport of the Exadata smart scan, which could read Oracle blocks and do smart scanning, so which could do all filtering job. But on the HDFS, you store any, you could store any type of data. You could store either CSV or Parquet file or JSON or XML or whatever you want. You need to have some uh, extra component external table services, how it's called on this slide, which read any file format and convert it in Oracle format. Then it stream, uh, it all happens internally on the cell side, on the Hadoop side, on the Hadoop node. And then it stream data on the smart scan. Smart scan do all filtration, so column pruning, uh, predicate push down, it powers JSON, it powers uh, XML, so it could apply in score models. Uh, you do what you can to do with smart scan, scan on this level, and then rest of the data you send to the database, towards the, da towards the database. Sounds good, but how to start working with Big Data SQL? Let's imagine that you already installed it, and you want to do literally first step. 
with uh, with big data SQL. So it's easy. Open Oracle database, for example, like with SQL Plus, Scott Tiger, and run the query. Uh, sounds really easy, but let's imagine that I run the query and it takes a while. And I don't understand why this query takes too long. So something is going on, but I don't understand what. I wanted to figure out what, what's happening right now with my query. And the debug and tune approach is the same like with Oracle database. First step are gonna be enterprise manager. You go to the Enterprise Manager or Database Express, uh, open uh, Performance Bookmark, open Monitored SQL, and here you could find uh, some SQLs which were run recently or which is uh, running right now. So for get more details, for drill, uh, you have to drill down on some concrete SQL ID. You click on this SQL ID and get more details about your query. Very good. What we can see here. First of all, Big Data SQL, it's Oracle SQL. It has Oracle plan. It has, uh, uh, or it has Oracle statistics. And so many optimizations, which is relevant for Oracle database are relevant here. Uh, for example, uh, if you met some performance problem, it could be uh, even on the Oracle database side. So if you write some complex query, uh, the real problem could be on the Oracle uh, database side. So the big data SQL plan is Oracle plan. You just work against external table. And here on the query plan, you could find on the my last uh, row in my uh, query plan, external table access storage full, which means that you run smart scan over external table. And second thing which you could find that we introduced new uh, waiting event, I all sell external table smart scan. So this event says that scan happens on the Hadoop side. It says, hey, you float something on the Hadoop side. And in our concrete example, all workload was pushed out uh, towards the cell side, towards the Hadoop side. So database was not utilized there. Well, very good. Um, now I know that I pushed uh, down something on the cell side, but what's going on on the cell side? It's interesting to know, am I CPU bound or disk bound? Uh, for answer on this question, it will be great to jump into Cloud Air Manager and, uh, or Ambari in case of Hortonworks. And then you could find a CPU utilization and host uh, and disk utilization across the host or even across the disk. And this information will help you to answer on question what's going on on the, uh, uh, on the cell site. If you wanted to run this, uh, to run you to, uh, to, to catch utilization in the real time, you may use this stuff. So it's Linux tool, uh, which you open on any Hadoop node. And then after this, you uh, you, know, you are able to see what's going on on your cluster, how you utilize, how your CPU utilized, how your disk utilized, how what's going on over, over the wire, what's going on with this network. So it's uh, like dynamic picture of this, of host utilization. Well, uh, let's imagine that you query were done and um, uh, uh, you want to know more details. Okay, I say that I say that uh, we offload a lot of data, so we filter out plenty of data on the cell side and move back uh, some rest of the data towards the database side. But 
let's imagine that you have very natural desire to know how much data in numbers you moved on the database side, or you want to know some, some extra statistics regarding this query. You could run the uh, simple SQL statement, which I list here, which join my start table uh, and start name table. And uh, we filter out everything uh, for by uh, XT predicate. Here, right now, we're going to extend this list, but today we have uh, uh, five different metrics, which will help you to analyze what's, what's, what was happened on the big data uh, SQL site, on the Hadoop site. Uh, last one, uh, Granul IO Byte Safe by Storage Index, I will explain later. Uh, it's a very good metric, but we will have a dedicated seminar for storage indexes. I'll explain more details about this counter. And let's talk about others. So, uh, cell XT Granul's requested for predicator flow shows you how many blocks do you have on HDFS. So granule and blocks are synonyms for big data SQL. And um, uh, second metric, uh, cell XT granule bytes request for predicator float. Uh, uh, it shows you how many bytes do you store on your on your data node. How many bytes are you going to scan? Cell interconnect bytes returned by XT smart scan shows how many bytes sent to the database. So in our example, let's jump back to the previous screen. We could find that we are we had about uh, 300 gigabytes of data and towards the database we sent only 35 megabytes. So we filter out 35 megabyte, megabytes um, of 300 gigabytes of data. And um, uh, quite it was quite efficient query. Great. And another one metric which we have and which is equal to zero, it's cell exigranal predicator flow tree tries. Ideally, it has to be equal to zero. If something went wrong with your query, we start scan another one replica or switch to the fallback mode. And then we, we will find that these metrics are different rather than zero. We have, in this case, it's very bad signal. We have to check the quarantine. We have to uh, check the logs and we have to figure out what was wrong with, with the query. But ideally, it has to be zero. So, uh, four basic step, uh, those four basic steps, four basic steps to debug and understand what's going on on your big data SQL cluster. Uh, you could find more information on uh, in the documentation or in big data SQL blog post, which we have on the on our data warehousing blog posts. All right. Uh, that's all for today. Any questions? So everyone is unmuted now. Yeah.